Chakra Chakras, Sanskrit, Yast, Chakra, Pali, Kaka, Lit, Wheel, Circle, are the various focal points in the subtle body used in a variety of ancient meditation practices, collectively denominated as Tantra, or the esoteric or inner traditions of Indian religion, Chinese Taoism, Tibetan Buddhism, as well as Japanese esoteric Buddhism, and in postmodernity, in New Age medicine, and originally psychologically adopted to the Western mind through the assistance of Carl Jung. The concept is found in the early traditions of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. They are treated as focal points, or putative nodes in the subtle body of the practitioner. These theories differ between the Indian religions, with many esoteric Buddhist texts consistently mentioning five chakras, while separate esoteric Hindu sources will offer six, or even seven. They are believed to be embedded within the actual physical body, whilst also originating within the context of mental and spiritual fields, or complexes of electromagnetic variety, the precise degree and variety of which directly arise from a synthetic average of all positive and negative so-called fields, this eventuating the complex nadi. Within Kundalini Yoga breath exercises, visualizations, mudras, bandhas, kriyas, and mantras are focused on transmuting subtle energy through chakras. The very concept of the so-called chakra, etymologically originates directly from the Sanskrit root. That chakra remained in virtual linguistic conformity throughout possible adaptations throughout the relative temporal and linguistic diversity of 2,000 years. At heart, the chakra denotes a wheel, a circle, and a cycle. One of the Hindu scriptures Rig Veda mentions chakra with the meaning of wheel, with ara, spokes. According to Fritz Stahl, Chakra has Indo-European roots, is related to Greek kuklos, from which comes English cycle, Latin circus, Anglo-Saxon veal and English wheel. However, the Vedic period texts use the same word as a simile in other contexts, such as the wheel of time or wheel of dharma, such as in Rig Veda hymn verse 1.164.11. In Buddhism generally and Theravada specifically, the Pali noun kaka connotes wheel. Within the central Tripitaka, the Buddha variously references the Dhammakaka, or Wheel of Dharma, connoting that his Dharma, universal in its advocacy, should bear the marks which bear the very characteristic of any temporal dispensation. While further, it should be added that the Buddha himself insinuated freedom from cycles in and of themselves, so I generous be they karmic, reincarnative, liberative, cognitive or emotional. In Jainism, the term chakra also means wheel and appears in various contexts in its ancient literature. Like other Indian religions, chakra in esoteric theories in Jainism such as those by Buddha's Agrasuri means yogic energy centers. The term chakra appears to first emerge within the Vedas, the most authoritative Hindu text, though not precisely in the sense of psychic energy centers, rather as Chakravartan or the king who turns the wheel of his empire in all directions from a center representing his influence and power. The iconography popular in representing the chakras, states white, trace back to the five symbols of yajna, the Vedic fire altar, square, circle, triangle, half moon and dumpling. The hymn 10.136 of the Rig Veda mentions a renunciate yogi with a female named Kunam Nama. Literally, it means she who is bent, coiled, representing both a minor goddess and one of many embedded enigmas and esoteric riddles within the Rig Veda. Some scholars, such as David Gordon White and Georg Feuerstein interpret this might be related to Kundalini Shakti, and an overt overture to the terms of esotericism that would later emerge in post-Aryan Brahmanism. The Upanishad Breath channels, Nadi, of yoga practices are mentioned in the classical Upanishads of Hinduism dated to 1st millennium BCE, but not psychic energy chakra theories. The latter, states White were introduced about 8th century CE in Buddhist texts as hierarchies of inner energy centers, such as in the Hevitra Tantra and Karyajati. These are called by various terms such as Kaka, Padma, Lotus, or Pita, Mound. These medieval Buddhist texts mention only four chakras, while later Hindu texts such as the Kupchakamata and Kalanyana Niranaya expanded the list to many more. In contrast to White, according to Foyer's team, Early Upanishads of Hinduism do mention chakra in the sense of psycho-spiritual vortices, along with other terms found in Tantra, Prana or Vayu, life energy, along with Nadi, energy-carrying arteries. According to Galvin Flood, the ancient texts do not present chakra and Kundalini-style yoga theories although these words appear in the earliest Vedic literature in many contexts. 
The chakra in the sense of four or more vital energy centers appear in the medieval era Hindu and Buddhist texts. Chakra is a part of the esoteric medieval era theories about physiology and psychic centers that emerged across Indian traditions. The theory posited that human life simultaneously exists in two parallel dimensions, one physical body, sthula sarira, and other psychological, emotional, mind, non-physical it is called the subtle body, sukshma sarira. This subtle body is energy. While the physical body is mass. The psyche or mind plane corresponds to and interacts with the body plane, and the theory posits that the body and the mind mutually affect each other. The subtle body consists of nadi, energy channels, connected by nodes of psychic energy it called chakra. The theory grew into extensive elaboration, with some suggesting 88,000 chakras throughout the subtle body. The chakra it considered most important varied between various traditions, but they typically ranged between 4 and 7. The important chakras are stated in Buddhist and Hindu texts to be arranged in a column along the spinal cord, from its base to the top of the head, connected by vertical channels. The tantric traditions sought to master them, awaken and energize them through various breathing exercises or with assistance of a teacher. These chakras were also symbolically mapped to specific human physiological capacity. Seed syllables, bia, sounds, subtle elements, tan madra, in some cases deities, colors and other motifs. The chakra theories of Buddhism and Hinduism differs from the historic Chinese system of meridians in acupuncture. Unlike the latter, the chakra relates to subtle body, wherein it has a position but no definite nervous node or precise physical connection. The tantric systems envision it as a continually present. Highly relevant and a means to psychic and emotional energy. It is useful in a type of yogic rituals and meditative discovery of radiant inner energy, prana flows, and mind body connections. The meditation is aided by extensive symbology, mantras, diagrams, models, deity, and mandala. The practitioner proceeds step by step from perceptible models to increasingly abstract models where deity and external mandala are abandoned, inner self and internal mandalas are awakened. These ideas are not unique to Buddhist and Hindu traditions. Similar and overlapping concepts emerged in other cultures in the East and the West, and these are variously called by other names such as subtle body, spirit body, esoteric anatomy, sidereal body and etheric body. According to Jeffrey Samuel and Jay Johnston, professors of religious studies known for their studies on yoga and esoteric traditions, chakra and related theories have been important to the esoteric traditions but they are not directly related to mainstream yoga. According to Edwin Bryant and other scholars, the goals of classical yoga such as spiritual liberation, freedom, self-knowledge, moksha, is attained entirely differently in classical yoga, and the chakra, nadi, kundalini physiology is completely peripheral to it. The classical Eastern traditions, particularly those that developed in India during the first millennium AD, primarily describe nadi and chakra in a subtle body context. To them, they are the parallel dimension of psyche mind reality that is invisible yet real. In the Nadi and Chakra flow the prana, breath, life energy. The concept of life energy varies between the texts, ranging from simple inhalation exhalation to far more complex association with breath mind emotion sual energy. This essence is what vanishes when a person dies, leaving a gross body. Some of it, states this subtle body theory, is what withdraws within when in sleeps. All of it is believed to be reachable, awakeable and important for an individual's body-mind health, and how one relates to other people in one's life. This subtle body network of Nadi and Chakra is, according to some later Indian theories and many New Age speculations, closely associated with emotions. Different esoteric traditions in Hinduism mention numerous numbers and arrangements chakras, of which a classical system of seven is most prevalent. This seven-part system, central to the core texts of Hatha Yoga, is one among many systems found in Hindu Tantric literature. These texts teach many different chakra theories. The chakra methodology is extensively developed in the goddess tradition of Hinduism called Shaktism. It is an important concept along with yantras, mandalas and kundalini yoga in its practice. Chakra in Shakta Tantrism means circle, an energy center within, as well as being a term of group rituals such as in Chakra Puja, worship within a circle, which may or may not involve tantra practice. The chakra-based system is one part of the meditative exercises that came to be known as Laya Yoga. Beyond its original Shakta milieu, Various sub-traditions within the Shaiva and Vaishnava schools of Hinduism also developed texts and practices on Nadi and Chakra systems. 
Certain modern Hindu groups also utilize a technique of circular energy work based on the chakras known as Kriya Yoga. Followers of this practice include the Bihar School of Yoga and Self-Realization Fellowship, and practitioners are known as Kriyaban. Although Paramansa Yogananda claimed this was the same technique taught as Kriya Yoga by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras and by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, as Karma Yoga, Swami Sityanand of the Bihar school disagreed with this assessment and acknowledged the similarities between Kriya and Taoist inner orbit practices. Both schools claim the technique is taught in every age by an avatar of God known as Babaji. The historicity of its techniques in India prior to the early 20th century are not well established. It believed by its practitioners to activate the chakras and stimulate faster spiritual development. The esoteric traditions in Buddhism generally teach five chakras. It must be noted, that it is possible that a system of Manipura, Anahata, Vijuta and the U.S. and Nisa Kamala chakras was absorbed into Tibetan thought, yet any source which alleges the employment of third or Manipura, chakra, within the context of thousand-year history of broad tantric monasticism, is here, not only conceptually inadequate, but technically misguided. In one development within the nine millennia of the Mantrayana of Tibetan Buddhism, a popular conceptualization of chakras in increasing subtlety and increasing order is as follows Nirmanakaya, Gross Self, Sambhagakaya, Subtle Self, Dharmakaya, Causal Self, and Mahasukakaya, Non Dual Self, each vaguely, yet by no means directly, corresponding to the categories within the Shiva Mantra Marga universe, i.e., Svadhisthana, Anahata, Vishuddha. Sahasrara, etc. However, depending on the meditational tradition, these vary between three and six. Chakras clearly play a key role in Tibetan Buddhism, and are considered to be the pivotal providence of tantric thinking. And, the precise use of the chakras across the gamut of tantric sadhanas gives little space to doubt the primary efficacy of Tibetan Buddhism as distinct religious agency, that being that precise revelation that, without tantra there would be no chakras, but more importantly, without chakras, there is no Tibetan Buddhism. The highest practices in Tibetan Buddhism point to the ability to bring the subtle pranas of an entity into alignment with the central channel, and to thus penetrate the realization of the ultimate unity, namely, the organic harmony of one's individual consciousness of wisdom with the co attainment of all embracing love, thus synthesizing a direct cognition of absolute Buddhahood. According to Jeffrey Samuel, the Buddhist esoteric systems develop chakra and nadi as central to their soteriological process. The theories were sometimes, but not always, coupled with a unique system of physical exercises, called Yantra Yoga or Frill Core. The chakras in the Tibetan practice are considered psycho-spiritual constituents, each bearing meaningful correspondences to cosmic processes and their postulated Buddha counterpart. Chakras, according to the Bon tradition, enable the gestalt of experience, with each of the five major chakras being psychologically linked with the five experiential qualities of unenlightened consciousness, the six realms of woe. The TSA Lung practice embodied in the Trul Core lineage unbaffles the primary channels, thus activating and circulating liberating prana. Yoga awakens the deep mind, thus bringing forth positive attributes, inherent gestalts, and virtuous qualities. In a computer analogy, the screen of one's consciousness is slated and the attribute bearing file is called up that contains necessary positive or negative, supportive qualities. Tantric practice is said to eventually transform all experience into clear light. The practice aims to liberate from all negative conditioning, and the deep cognitive salvation of freedom from control and unity of perception and cognition. Qigong, also relies on a similar model of the human body as an esoteric energy system, except that it involves the circulation of qi, also qi, or life energy. The qi, equivalent to the Hindu prana, flows through the energy channels called meridians, equivalent to the nadi, but two other energies are also important, jing, or primordial essence, and shen, or spirit energy. In the principal circuit of qi, called the microcosmic orbit, Energy rises up a main meridian along the spine, but also comes back down the front torso. Throughout its cycle, it enters various dantian, elixir fields, which act as furnaces, where the types of energy in the body, jing, qi, and shen, are progressively refined. These dantian play a very similar role to that of chakras. The number of dantian varies depending on the system, the navel dantian is the most well known, but there is usually a dantian located at the heart and between the eyebrows. The lower dandian at or below the navel transforms essence, or jing, into qi. The middle dandian in the middle of the chest transforms qi into shen, 
or spirit, and the higher dandian at the level of the forehead, or at the top of the head, transforms Shen into Wuji, infinite space of void. Traditional spirituality in the Malay archipelago borrows heavily from Hindu Buddhist concepts. In Malay and Indonesian metaphysical theory, the chakra's energy rotates outwards along diagonal lines. Defensive energy emits outwards from the center line, while offensive energy moves inwards from the sides of the body. This can be applied to energy healing, meditation, or martial arts. Sealit practitioners learn to harmonize their movements with the chakras, thereby increasing the power and effectiveness of attacks and movements. The more common and most studied esoteric system incorporates six major chakras along with a seventh center generally not regarded as a chakra. These points are arranged vertically along the axial channel, so Nadi in Hindu texts, Avaduti in some Buddhist texts. It was this chakra system that was translated in early 20th century by Sir John Woodrow also called Arthur Avalon, in the text The Serpent Power. Avalon translated the Hindu text Sat Chakra Nirapana meaning the examination, Nirpana, of the six, Sat, Chakras, Chakra. The chakras are traditionally considered meditation aids. The yogi progresses from lower chakras to the highest chakra blossoming in the crown of the head, internalizing the journey of spiritual ascent. In both the Hindu and Buddhist Kundalini or Kandali traditions, the chakras are pierced by a dormant energy residing near or in the lowest chakra. In Hindu texts she is known as Kundalini, while in Buddhist texts she is called Kandali or Tummo, Tibetan, Jitam Mo, Fierce One. Below are the common New Age description of these six chakras and the seventh point known as Sahasrara. This New Age version incorporates the Newtonian colors that were completely unknown when these systems were created. The actual colors for the chakras vary from text to text and do not conform to the Newtonian spectrum. Many systems include myriad minor chakras throughout the body. Talu, Bindu, Manas, and Devadashanta chakra are close to and associated with Inner chakra. Situated just to the left of Anahata chakra, where the heart is situated anatomically, is Ridaya chakra. Lalan's chakra is situated at the base of the mouth and is associated with Vishuddha chakra. In 1918, the translation of two Indian texts, the Sat Chakra Nirapana and the Paduka Pancaka, by Sir John Woodrow, alias Arthur Avalon, in a book titled The Serpent Power introduced the Shakta theory of seven main chakras in the West. This book is extremely detailed and complex, and later the ideas were developed into the predominant Western view of the chakras by C. W. Ledbetter in his book The Chakras. Many of the views which directed Ledbetter's understanding of the chakras were influenced by previous theosophist authors, in particular Johann Georg Jaitel, a disciple of Jacob Uma, and his book Theosophia Practica, 1696, in which Jaitel directly refers to inner force centers, a concept reminiscent of the chakras. A completely separate contemplative movement within the Eastern Orthodox Church is Hesychasm. A form of Christian meditation. Comparisons have been made between the hesychastic centers of prayer and the position of the chakras. Particular emphasis is placed upon the heart area. However, there is no talk about these centers as having any sort of metaphysical existence. Far more than in any of the cases discussed above, the centers are simply places to focus the concentration during prayer. In Anatomy of the Spirit, 1996, Caroline Mace describes the function of chakras as follows. Every thought and experience you've ever had in your life gets filtered through these chakra databases. Each event is recorded into your cells. The chakras are described as being aligned in an ascending column from the base of the spine to the top of the head. New Age practices often associate each chakra with a certain color. In various traditions, chakras are associated with multiple physiological functions, an aspect of consciousness, a classical element and other distinguishing characteristics. They are visualized as lotuses or flowers with a different number of petals in every chakra. The chakras are thought to vitalize the physical body and to be associated with interactions of a physical, emotional and mental nature. They are considered of life energy or prana, which New Age belief equates with Shakti, Qi in Chinese, Ki in Japanese, Koch Haguf in Hebrew, Bios in Greek, and Ether in both Greek and English which is thought to flow among them along pathways called Nadi. The function of the chakras is to spin and draw in this energy to keep the spiritual, mental, emotional and physical health of the body in balance. Rudolf Steiner considered the chakra system to be dynamic and evolving. He suggested that this system has become different for modern people than it was in ancient times and that it will, in turn, be radically different in future times. 
Steiner described a sequence of development that begins with the upper chakras and moves down, rather than moving in the opposite direction. He gave suggestions on how to develop the chakras through disciplining thoughts, feelings, and will. According to Florin Lowndes, a spiritual student can further develop and deepen or elevate thinking consciousness when taking the step from the ancient path of schooling to the new path represented by Steiner's The Philosophy of Freedom. Chakras and their importance are posited to reside in the psyche. However, there are those who believe that chakras have a physical manifestation as well. Gary Osborne, for instance, has described the chakras as metaphysical counterparts to the endocrine glands, while Anadea Judith noted a marked similarity between the positions of the two and the roles described for each. Stephen Sturges also links the lower six chakras to specific nerve plexuses as along the spinal cord as well as glands. C.W. Ledbetter associated the Ina chakra with the pineal gland, which is a part of the endocrine system. These associations remain speculative, however, and have no empirical validation. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.